In this video, we'll explain how to read the acoustic measurements taken by the Dirac Live software, how to make adjustments to the target curve, and how to optimize the calibration. After measurements are taken, Dirac Live will show you the average output response of each speaker for the nine measurement positions. Here you will see tabs for each speaker on the right. The light blue lines indicate the measured output of the speakers from the lowest frequencies to the highest. The orange line is the Dirac target curve, which is to recreate the response of a perfect loudspeaker in the ideal listening environment. Left and right speaker pairs will be linked together automatically so that any adjustments made are done in groups. You can unlink speakers to view and make changes individually or link more speakers together if they are identical and symmetrically positioned. In looking at the front speakers, notice varying peaks and valleys in the response at lower frequencies below 300 Hz. These are caused by the room. In the middle and upper frequency ranges, the measured response is more indicative of the natural response of the speaker. Making adjustments to the curve is often recommended to ensure that you don't overdrive the speakers and cause damaging distortion. We will give you a few pointers on making the best adjustments to suit the speakers. If you make mistakes or want to make changes later, you can save the project at any time and reload. Let's take a closer look. You can zoom in on a section by clicking and dragging over that area that you want to have a closer look. You can go back to the full view by double clicking anywhere on the screen. To make adjustments to the curve, you need to add pivot points by double clicking on the orange curve at the frequencies that you want to adjust. Always add enough pivot points beginning from right to left and make any up or downward adjustments to the left so you don't change the entire curve. Add the first pivot point to the right of a frequency drop where it intersects the curve, then the next point to the left where it intersects the curve, and then one in the middle or directly above the drop. The first tip is to make minor adjustments in the frequencies below 300 Hz to match the speaker's natural response to prevent distortion from overdriving the speaker. If there are deep drops below the target curve, make adjustments to follow the curve carefully, not to boost more than 4 dB in those holes, as there can be a loss of dynamics or potential damage to the speakers. In the higher frequencies, typically above 5K, we suggest following the natural drop-off of the speaker by adding a smooth curve close to the measured speaker output in that range. For speakers with a limited low frequency capability, like small or architectural speakers or subwoofers that don't produce high frequencies, it's important not to ask them to create sounds that they're not designed to play. You can click and drag the filter range up for small speakers so you make no adjustments in the low frequencies. You can also click and drag the filter range down for subwoofers. You may need to remove a pivot point before you can drag the filter curtain over. Once you've made adjustments for the first set of speakers, you can save the edited target by clicking Save Target. This can be useful if you have a matching center, surround, or effect speakers. Simply click the next speakers from the tab on the right and then click Load Target. Once you've made adjustments to each speaker, save the project as Target. You're ready to move on, so click Optimize. At this point, the file is sent off to the Dirac supercomputer in Sweden to be validated, and this takes less than a minute. As soon as the results are delivered, save the project and name it Optimize. Now let's take a look.